Come on, Rangers! 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 The FA Trophy, the cup competition that provides one final route to Wembley for Dorking Wanderers. To progress, Mark White's side must travel to National League strugglers Southend United, a club recently relegated from the Football League that is yet to truly accept its place in the non-league world. They may be a division above Dorking, but Southend are near the foot of the National League table. Thus, the trip east provides Dorking with a chance to show their quality in an old-fashioned 13,000-seater stadium while also giving Mark a place to take his squad out for a much-deserved Christmas party, which is why this story begins at the Holiday Inn. Right, club sandwich. Got your kit? The bench I heard today. Basically, you're named uh, on the bench, so you could be called into play for the penalties. It's probably worth mentioning that this narrator has indeed been signed up by the club and is terrified at the prospect of making a semi-pro debut at the age of 42. Hi, right, boys. I'm good. How are you? Are you right? Nicky Wheeler was driving at 55 miles an hour, <laughs> so for to, like for the perfect, you know, petrol fuel efficiency. <laughs> That's how tight he is. As the players congregate on the top floor of a hotel that, much to Mark's surprise, does not overlook the seafront, the manager is having to juggle his players around due to a combination of sickness and injury. Right, changes. Ch -ch changes turn and face the strain. Oh, no, I thought it was on the seafront. This cheaper. This cheaper. Discount. Discount, Ray. Yeah, don't worry, you've got a nice CU, yeah? For the attacking ones, yeah? yeah. So keep these two back, and this is the third one back. The whole game, keep swinging in swingers to the 16 year old keeper, non-stop. So it's on the keeper, but missing out the, whoever the, the plug is on the front post, yeah? Okay, listen, the last time we mention um, a Christmas drinks is now, and I know you'll be cool with that. We're a close knit group, so that's cool hearing all that. The message today really is, is just fucking business as usual. I mean, it's already a compliment to us as a team and you, that all their fans think we're gonna beat them and all their fans are just talking about what a great side we are. Because everybody, we've got that kind of profile as a, as a team, the way we play. A lot of people follow what we do. So, what, you know, to go to South End away from home and for people to talk about it like that is great. So for me, it's just business as usual. That's all it is, business as usual. We're three, five, two. Do you know, like, the way the team's evolved, actually, it actually makes me, a li I'll be honest with you, a little bit more excited than what I was beforehand. Because I wanted to try and find a way today, if I'm honest, to play Nile in centre mid and, um, and to play Nicky. So it's worked out, to be honest, really well, because Macca's going to do the bit he does brilliantly. And on this pitch, he's going to get loads of the ball. Alfie in top form. Young people are fucking stupid, Alfie. And when they're on form, they, they tune out. And that would worry me about you. So don't fucking tune out, Alfie because you're fucking flying, son. And you're flying because you've worked hard to fly. Don't fucking stop now. Don't stop now. Nicky and Briggsy gonna play on the wings. Uh, that means we get the engine room in there, which I think is important. Nile and Josh, that's a big, big engine room. Moro, gonna be captain. Um, hold. Kano, you're now playing right uh, of the three. Dan G and Bobby, okay? It's a team that will definitely put the foot on the ball and play all over that team is just going to play football, which is great, because they're going to uh, they're going to give us a chance to play football this lot. My notes on them were, um, I think, good pace as a team, as you'd expect. Good pace, full time. I'm going to give you the positives on them. And I think they've got people that can finish. I think they've got people that can finish. And that's about it. So good pace. They've got boys with a bit of quality that could finish given time. Um, low confidence, big time. Can't deal with crosses, conceding goals. Fans on their back every game after two minutes. So it's a good game to have a fast start, you know, big time. Just keep the fucking ball and just keep passing the ball. Because we've got the ability to absolutely pass teams like this off the pitch. And I think we are getting up to that speed now where we can do this. I feel like we're getting to that point. 
But I'll say one thing. They are 150 fucking percent um, going to be fit um, and going to run about. And they also are under the cosh as well. So that goes two ways. First goal, low confidence, head scratching. Fuck, here we go again. Score the first goal. Fuck me, this is our day. You know, we've been under a cloud. Now we're fucking back at it. So it's important we have a fast start. All right, boys, I've got a lot of confidence in this today. A lot. Keep the factory settings there, do the basics, all right? See you down there. This feels like a big day. It's just, it's just nice for us to be going places like this. I mean, the reality is it's a division between the clubs. I think something like 11 places in footballing terms. Um, but that's, you know, when you come places like this, it just shows how far you've come as a club. You know, um, you know, we were just reminiscing there about playing at Bosham in Sussex County Division 3 um, not too long ago. So, you know, park pitches where you'd have to pause play to get a dog off it. And that's the reality of this club. So if you come to Southend United and places like that, clubs with steeped in history, it, it, you always have to pinch yourself a little bit because um, it's a sign of how far you've come. Uh, you know you're up against a 17-year-old goalkeeper today. Um, you must be thinking, stick it on him. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like anyone would, um, you might turn out to be their hero. It's a tie that goes to penalties, strangely, after 90 minutes. but. He might end up being their hero. I mean, you know, fair play to the lad getting an opportunity. But yeah, if we can make him nervous and, and put him under pressure, that's what we'll do. And a lot of what, well, some of what we do will be designed to do that. But, you know, this is where these youngsters get to test themselves. You know, Southend and him, they'll know where he is, won't they, today? If it, some people step up towards it, some people run away from it. So it be interesting. Do you ever stop and pinch yourself and think, I never expected to be in a, a ground like this? Yeah, I didn't really expect it, to be honest. And, uh, you know, it's, um, you do sort of take stock. We're getting a little bit more used to it to a degree. Um, but I think when the crowd's in here and in the, in the technical area, you sort of, um, you do sort of think, blimey. But you haven't got too long to think about it because, you know, we're focused on winning the game. Um, and, uh, you know, getting all the fine margins right. And, you know, we've had a team meeting at the hotel and, you know, we're confident that, you know, we're confident we're going to give it a good go, mate, and uh, tactically get it right. That's the plan. Old school ground, this, isn't it? Old school ground. There's like a real cool feel about yeah. it. Though. Like yeah. Like, yeah. This is like, it's like if you it's come here. The player's kit. That's what I can picture. That old school. Filthy, yeah, yeah. 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 Vinnie Jones nice. out here yeah. trying to kick somebody in the fucking yeah. balls and some shit. That's how I picture it. No, no gloves. What I picture is like the fact that the granddad, they all, every single yeah. generation come to Roots Hall for this game, yeah. for this club. This might this, this reminds me of like when your old man would have been playing. Me too. I could actually literally going inside there and now yeah, finding yeah, the yeah. owner and the chairman and being yeah, like, yeah. being like you know yeah, yeah. happy to have me kind of thing. Going into those boxes, the, all the old memorabilia of like in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Finish it, mate. Yeah, I feel, I feel shit, but I don't feel as bad as I thought I would. Good. Wrap up warm. Wrap up more, you're going to be going on. Just go in positions, right? Look, go in positions, Moro. Right, listen, so I think they're playing like a 4-4-1-1, four, four, one, one, yeah? And what they quite often do is try and hit them diag. So you are going to be defending in wide areas if that's the case. And then you'll just be like a fucking surrogate centre-half. It's about, no, it's about like on the ball, bosh, like we are. Off the ball, bang, and you're back in there, yeah? OK? Fast start, boys. Nicky, get the ball high, mate, yeah? yeah? We're in absolutely no hurry here today at all. None at all, right? On the ball, show our class. Put your foot on it. Even if Briggsy, you and Nicky Wheeler's there. Put your foot on it, set the next bloke, transfers. We're in no hurry to chase a game of football here. The key to this game is don't give them the fucking ball. Don't give them the ball. Because they're just going to go diags on you and try and put it behind our back three. I'll tell you that in advance. The only difficulty is, when you've got a team low in confidence, a goal can do a lot for their confidence. You mustn't let them have a sniff. 
Don't let them get that confidence boost, okay? Very important. I told you two dangers, right? Don't let them get shots and crosses off, but they're dead balls, they're gonna be notably bigger than us. So dead balls, don't be stood in there, marking, waiting for Jason Pryor to come and clear it out when he's on the bench, or Red Harris when he's on the bench. We're gonna have some great spells in this game. We're gonna have some great moments in this game, 100%, okay? Make us look like the fucking Football League side. I know you will, okay? Let's go, come on. Oh Buzzing, eh, these days? I got it down the music. Mark did make it possible for a bunch of amateurs to access the dressing room and the bench, but the somewhat perturbed South End media people objected to our cameras. So instead of seeing the bench footage, we've had to replace it with drawings. Let's go, more road, loads of info. With their club in turmoil due to the presence of an unpopular owner, the disaffected South End supporter base has not turned out in great numbers. Yet those in attendance, particularly the travelling Wanderers fans, are making a decent racket and giving Dorking a taste of a stadium atmosphere. Cross! Cross! South End's own high press is limiting Dan Gallagher's options coming forwards. Yeah. Yeah. It's just where it's 4-4-2 or 4-4-1-1. Play! Play! Josh A! Dan, Dan, only go home if you're desperate. Don't go home to Dan. Do it yourself. At the other end, debutant teenage goalkeeper Colin Andengundi gets his first touch of the ball. Five minutes in and neither team has found their feet, but Bobby Joe Taylor does find Alfie Rutherford with the ball down the outside. Rutherford is in fine form and he cuts in from the left to slot the ball past the young goalkeeper and give Dorking the early lead Mark badly wanted. Generally struggling for form and a goal down to a lower league opponent, Southend will do well to bounce back from this setback. They certainly try, only to meet the imperious Dan Gallagher's head. A misplaced pass is indicative of a side low on confidence. Hey, you've got those shirt numbers in midfield. Yeah, yeah. What are they? 14 and 8 centimetres. 14 and 8 centimetres. No! Pick up! Moro! Sort the shirt! As the coaching team figure out the marking situation, Dorking are building another attack from the back, and Southend are struggling to get near their opponents. Good! Time, time, back pedal, time! Drive! Man up there! On your own! Get on your own! Briggs carves the United defence open and narrowly misses the target. I think Niall, Niall's, the problem with Niall is just he's doing so much stuff off the ball. That Listen, Beardy! That when he gets it, he's gone. They're giving, they're giving the two Dans too much of the ball. Yeah. Gallagher and Lincoln don't want the ball in this game. Okay? It takes 15 minutes for Southend to muster their first real foray into the Dorking box. But even with a back three that includes two midfielders, Dorking aren't particularly troubled. Arguably the most dramatic moment of the match comes when Zach Brunt's pass is deflected out for a throw-in into the hands of a ball boy with unerringly good aim. For a home crowd largely starved of entertainment, a ball boy hitting the lino, followed by a ball being hit onto the roof of the stand, must feel like Christmas, which of course it is. Southend are giving the ball away as if it were a wham bar in a copy of the Beano, and like a child born in the late 70s, Dorking are primed to take advantage of such generosity. A 
attacking midfielder James McShane combines with Rutherford and McManus and is only thwarted by the heroic fingertips of the teenage goalkeeper. Dan! Dan, good! Kane, ask a bit more of Briggsy! Nicky! 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 Mark's last-minute plan to crowd the young goalkeeper on corners is doomed to fail, with the referee offering Andy and plenty of protection. South End have rarely had a chance to break, but when Josh Taylor's effort is blocked, the home side finally find a way to move back up the pitch. Great work, right, Josh Taylor. There's a nick! There's a nick! Sam Dalby's hold up play allows his teammates to get into the final third, and Brunt finds space on the right hand side to cross for Lewis Gard. United are getting a little more confidence and testing Dorking's back line. That side's fucking a worry. Brunt and Dimitriou combine to play in guard and Luke Moore makes an ill-advised tackle. Is that Moore again? They haven't had a fucking shot, mate. Do you know what I mean? Silly tackle, that is. The hitherto anonymous Reese Murphy steps up and delivers the worst penalty since John Christie testified against poor Timothy Evans. And Dorking immediately have a chance to break South End's spirits further still. Rutherford is unstoppable down the inside right and he crosses for Briggs, only for the winger to see his effort repelled by Sean Hobson. Bobby! Stay with him! Stay with that fella! As the game calms down, Dawkins get back into a rhythm and Southender left chasing shadows like a groupie at a Cliff Richard concert. One pass! One pass early! Turn up! When the ever dangerous Nick Wheeler gets into the box, it's another small test for the South End keeper. Forward only, forward only. Well done. Josh might need to sit for more, oh. With half time fast approaching, Dorking go looking for a soul destroying second, but in doing so, they leave themselves open to a counter. Zach Brunt delivers on his wide man promise with a cross that leads to a defensive mix-up. Four Dorking players leave the ball to one another and Sam Dolby can't believe his luck. Stung by the surprise goal, Dorking find themselves on the back foots for the first time today. Offside! Foul! The referee lets Dorking off the hook, which is something of a shame for Sam Dolby and his physics-defying header. Fucking header that was. Two. Kane! Kane! Alfie! 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 Wanderers have rediscovered their composure and once again find a way from back to front. Oh, 
Nick Wheeler is incensed to see James Dunn make a diving save with his arm and for the referee to not give a penalty. Dunn implies he stops it with his testicles while the referee insists it was his chest. I just thought I should talk to them. Okay. Right, listen up. Listen up. Right. Midfield are trying to overcompensate all over the place. When you're getting the ball, Bobby, the first thing you're doing is looking up. So if you're playing a fruit machine, right, put a ball around the corner wins you a quid, right? A ball back to Dan Gallagher gives you 25p, but a ball inside to Niall or Josh or Moro so we can transfer, that's like the jackpot. That's what your role is designed to do, same as you came, okay? So, you know like we talk 80-20? For me, you're at 60-40. Can you just even that out? But make your first intention, meet the ball, right? Can I roll Nicky's feet because he's having a great game and the fullback has not touched him? So you'll see in the game, you're thinking, right, bosh. And you've done loads of great stuff, don't get me wrong. But we don't need to force them dikes. Don't need to force it. Because everything, everything good they've done has been off the back of us. Even, even their first shot was the penalty that went over the bar. That's their first shot. So everything, their second was with the goal. So everything good they've done has been us um, losing the ball. Come in, mate. Everything good they've done has been us losing the ball. Okay? Simple. And then they're just breaking a little bit of noise. Don't worry about the noise. If they're going to plug the near post, protect the keeper from the dead balls, then start literally, those of you in on the keeper from our corners, Josh, those boys in on it, go in the net. So for me, we keep doing what we're doing. You've got to get the balance and act right between playing the good football and then knowing when to put it just slightly around the corner or into Maka or Alfie, which, Bobby, you've done a couple of times, OK? But the key bit is this. The pattern is this. When Kane gets it, when Bobby gets it, can we go across the fucking pitch? But let me tell you, they're not going to get weaker, they're going to get stronger. They're full-time. They're full-time pros. They're going to get stronger. They're going to get fitter. <laughs> But they cannot handle our last third. They cannot handle it. So we've done loads of things really, really well. You know, if we hadn't, I'll tell you straight. We've done loads of things really, really, really well. Get together, shorten the game up, shorten the game up as much as possible, and just use your pattern. Okay? Come on. Come on. Jukes. Southend's start to the second half is far more urgent than the first, although their final third action is more toothless than the homeless cats we recently adopted. Seriously, he's only got three teeth. We don't know how he eats crunchy food, but he does. The home side are applying pressure, but they're not getting anywhere. Meanwhile, the threat of physically ejecting a bunch of amateurs from the stadium forces a redeployment of our resources, so we won't need any drawings for a little while. This, this guy is going to give Kane a lot of trouble. He's good, he's going to give Kane a lot of trouble. He's the one I thought was playing out here. As South End toil to no avail, James McShane has developed a hamstring issue. He's coming off for the sickly Jason Pryor, despite the fourth official's confusion with the number board. You've got 91 up there now. Fourth, do you know how to work that? <laughs> Pryor's impact is immediate. A deft flick plays in McManus and he tees up Josh Taylor. Dunn's clumsy challenge on Taylor leads to a penalty and Dorking have the chance to retake the lead if they can figure out who's taking it. Alfie! Alfie! 
Alfei! Alfei! Could that mean he wanted it? With no designated taker, Bobby Joe takes responsibility, only to see his penalty saved by the increasingly heroic schoolboy in goal. South End have survived the penalty, but Wanderers are still on the front foot, impatiently looking for an opening. Deliver! Dorking are tossing the ball into the box and keeping possession in the final third. But with their opponents dropping deeper than East 17, there's no space for any shots. Forward! Come buddy, no foul, good. Stand, stand, stand. Get up. Get up. Well, we've got no changes. And we're on top. All they're doing, they're only on the break, aren't they? They're only on the break, yeah. I think we're, we're all a bit nervous. There are 20 minutes left before the final whistle and a penalty shootout, and Dorking are upping the tempo. Right, Nicky. Doing well, mate. Lads, good spell! Good spell! Well done! Well done! Jason Pryor drops deep to help feed Rutherford, but even Alfie can't quite manage to test the keeper. In an effort to get his team out of their half, substitute Matthew Dennis drives forward and finds some space in the Dorking third. Dennis evades a trio of defenders to curl in an inch-perfect shot and beat keeper Dan Lincoln. Mark reacts by sending on live wire wide man Jimmy Mewitt. So take him on. Take him on. Balls in the box when you can, but we take him on. Nicky! Nicky! Bobby Joe Taylor reacts positively, driving at the United defence. Rutherford's shot is blocked and South End get to counter again. How's your luck though, falling to like, you know what I mean? Sub Louis Walsh pegs it up the left wing and offers a chance to finish the game. Josh Taylor refuses to give up. He storms forward and plays in Mewitt. Jim! JP back stick. Mewitt is proven to be Dawkins' most dangerous player in the final stages. Take him on! Dawkins' patience is admirable, but the clock is ticking. There are but seconds left. To injury time, Bobby Joe delivers a fine ball, and Jason Pryor has a chance to level. Come on. Oh, Jace. Yeah, what? 
17 players in the box. Can we get it in there? Fucking hell. Cheers, pal. Thank you, mate. Cheers, mate. Yeah, mate. Cheers, pal. Thank you. Well done, mate. Thank you. Huh? You're shaking hands. Say that again, mate. I'm shaking hands. The problem is there's an FA rule that looks like you're saying stuff to me. You might be shaking my hands, but just don't risk yourself. Well played, mate. Thank you, mate. Well done. Well played, mate. Cheers, pal. Yeah, you can't shake hands. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, boys. Well done. All the best. Well done, pal. Right, get ready in a minute, boys. Ah, brilliant second half. I thought, that was, I thought that second half was excellent. I'll be honest, I thought you can't control every minute of every game you ever play. Do you know what I mean? It's impossible. I thought the second half was excellent. I thought the midfield two um, done everything I said and more. I thought that Josh and Niall run the midfield. I thought we was prepared to play the pattern. I thought our touches were good. We've created enough chances there across the 90 to win a lot of games. I take responsibility um, for not designating a penalty taker. That's my mistake. I would have told Alfie to take penalties at the moment. He's scoring everything he touches. That's my fault. In advance, I'll take that one. Um, but Bobby, you know, well done for stepping up. That's, that's what you should do always. Um, that's my bad. That's my bad, not designating that. Uh, but listen, that didn't actually lose us the game for me, that situation one bit. They've missed one as well, haven't they? First half was a little bit too eager in terms of our, um, our forward play. And obviously with Nard and Josh, the way you play is so eager that sometimes it can leave a few holes. Equally, you know, we've got to be honest, we're, you know, we're playing two centre mids in a back three. You know, you've got to, you know we've, we've come to South End. I, think, I don't think it's disrespectful to say that we've had the lion's share of the game. I think it's an honest statement. We've come to South Bend, play some great football. Play some brilliant football. Didn't get the results. So we won't be disappointed one bit. There's absolutely nothing I can say now that's going to put us back in the FA Trophy. Not, not a single thing, lads, yeah? Jimmy, I thought, went on, done well. Great to see you back out there. But for me, that's what it's about. So we can't be disappointed. Don't bother being disappointed. The number one thing for me was we had to come here and put on a really good show and show that we're on the upgrade. And when you've got to just quantify, you're playing a team, they're full time, they're a league above, they've got a few fans making a bit of noise, we've got players playing out of position, I thought you had a great second half, Kane. Players, players out of position, doing the right things. I thought we looked like the unit, you know. Honestly, I'll be honest, I'm struggling. I said to Jukes on the side, you know, I'm, I can't pick holes. Because in every game of football, someone will get out of position, someone will give it away. But we've had, you know, we've had 85% of everything we've done was really good. So we've now got a shitload of games coming up. We're in good form. Individually, players returning to good form. And we're showing a bit of wondrous uh, pattern of play, a bit of wondrous spirit. Everything, I'm happy with everything, to be honest. So we've done our best today, boys. It was, um, I thought the boys that went to the field today done a brilliant job. Brilliant job, and the boys that went on as well, or the boys that went on. So, I think we've got to be really honestly. I, I think genuinely, we've got to be pleased with our work. We've got to be pleased with our work. Another day of the week, it's a three 0 win, really. To be honest with you, um, just didn't quite do enough. Okay, so we'll get the gear in the right way, lads. Yeah, and I'll see you back at the. Uh, there's food in the hotel on that floor we were earlier at half past six. So I'll see you up there. I'm going to go up there before I get changed. I'm just going to hang about. All right, cool. Well done, boys. Well done, boys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. come on, mate, yeah. You were surprisingly chewed out in the post-match talk, I thought. Was that sincere? Was it because you've got a night out and you didn't want to push it yet? No, 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 no. I, uh, I always, always um, make sure that I'm honest in my appraisal because, you know, then they believe you when you're giving them a bollocking, you get more respect. 
I thought we was excellent today. Like I thought the football we played, we, we played. Listen, you, you put all the facts together, right? The bookies ended up making us favourite at Roots Hall um, to beat South End. Um, the fans consider us, you know, um, a big banana skin for South End. You know, during the match, we've outplayed them for like long periods. We've had enough chances. I think when we watch that back, the amount of chances we've had in that game, I think the goalie's probably been given man of the match. We've played, we've had two centre midfielders playing in a back three. We didn't change our formation. We weren't scared. We've done what we do. We've done what Dorkin Wanderers do. Um, and we, um, we came here and we showed everybody how we play. And I think all and sundry in the ground and the opposition and Kev, the manager for South Bend, they, they all know that you know, they played a great team today. We played great football. And we just didn't quite have enough to get over the line. Um, but we have created a serious amount of good chances in that game. Another day of the week, I think it could have been a victory. How are you feeling? Oh, uh, good, good question. Um, a bit, bit disappointed, to be fair. Um, more so for, for the lads, really. Um, because, you know, listen, game ended fine from the, the moment of the penalty that I took, obviously. Um, it's, a, it's a tough pill to swallow. Um, but I did what I usually done, the keeper saved it, obviously. Um, and ultimately, that, that is a defining moment that, you know, could, the tables could have turned 2-1 lead. I think we was more than comfortable in the game all the way through 90 minutes. Um, so, you know, for, for me personally, a little bit disappointed for the boys more so, um, because, you know, I, I'd say I'm a tough cookie. I think I can swallow the fact that uh, I missed the pen. I'm just a little bit gutted, really, because I think we deserve more from the game, to be honest. It's a team that you have to understand the ethic of it. You have to understand how he wants you to play. And I mean, where I've, for five years before that, I've been playing in a completely different side. And I'd say at Dorking it's almost a project as well, with the way that you have to learn how they want you to play. I mean, I've never played in a system like it, but now I think it's starting to show, I'm starting to understand it a lot more. Um, but yeah, I mean, I remember two years ago when you was putting up videos of me <laughs> on TikTok, and uh, yeah, and he was, it looks like he was always slating me to the ground, and I had people message me about it saying, <laughs> Did your manager actually like you? No, I was like, like uh, it's just one of them things. Like... The headspace is right. I feel like the, the team's um, on a good trajectory. Um, we took an injury today, McShane, it would be a concern. And Luke Moore's, I mean, Luke Moore's played with half a knee. Barry Fuller, the captain, couldn't even come today. He's too poorly. Jason Pryor couldn't start the game. And, um, because he was too ill. And I looked round on the bench and I didn't have one sub, one fit sub, not one. We beg to differ on that point. Not even that new guy, Richard Fippen. Can you still have a good night out tonight? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, listen, the boys are great because they know me. Um, I think I've, I'm, I'm taking it a little bit more easier um, because I missed, obviously, unfortunately, in the FA Cup. So. Um, that feeling was really, really harsh because competitive, competitively I've never missed a penalty um, until that day. So that was that was really, really sore. This one um, is, is more sore for the boys. I'm more disappointed that the fact that I couldn't obviously take the chance for them. Um, but yeah, I, I will try, try to enjoy. We'll see, see how it goes. I just think the the credit to the, to the boys at this club and the management team to set themselves up against a team at like South End outplay them for long, long periods. You know, you can only measure, you've got to really measure performances. I thought another day of the week we could win the game. Um, I'm annoyed at myself for not designating a penalty taker. Really annoyed at myself. That one all, that's a big goal to score um, against a team that's found winning hard to come by. I think in myself, I just needed that little run. And I, it's happened to me at every club, to be fair. I mean, with Haven, it sort of started straight away, which I was quite lucky with. But it takes, um, yeah, it takes a bit of confidence from me. I would say I'm a confidence player. So now that it's working, I hope it continues. Um, 
I feel like I'm playing with a lot more freedom in myself. I'd say that I was probably a little bit tense when I was going into games. I mean, normally when I was in front of goal, probably last year, I was thinking, oh, I'm under a bit of pressure here. But now I feel like the pressure's off, which you shouldn't, but in a way it's good in myself. Jason, Jason, um, uh, regular taker, he's missed the odd one, um, but then he's missed half the season through injury. So Bobby stepped up on them. Uh, Bobby missed one in the FA Cup shootout. Uh, credit to Bobby, he wanted the ball. That's what you want every player to want, but um, in hindsight, being a great thing, I wish before the game, uh, Alfie Rutherford's absolutely flying and I'd have given him the confidence to, uh, I'd have given him the sort of confidence to say, right, you're on penalties, Alfie, and if you miss it, then that's my bad. But, um, so that's annoying. That's a bit of detail that I got wrong there. But we had enough chances. I just thought the boys were brilliant, Richard. Like you're talking about you're playing a full-time team, two centre midfielders in the back three. The holding midfielder's not played in a month because he's got half a knee, right? Um, you, you've lost your captain in the morning, you've lost your talisman striker in the morning, and we've gone to South End and we've won over a lot of fans. And sometimes that is the exercise, Richard. You know, I might not be as I might, I might not be as happy about that if it was the league because the league, I think, has more mental intensity. Uh, but I was really proud of, the, proud of the performance today. Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. Remember to hit like and subscribe and leave a comment because we read them all and that stuff helps us reach more people and we want to keep going on this thing. This week's comment of the week comes from Bakary and G, who said, Hello and respect to you all from Bacow, the Gambia, West Africa. People are watching us in West Africa. That's fucking mental.